Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Genshin Impact reaction video. For today, we are going to be checking out the official Genshin Impact version 4.3 drip marketing, which went live earlier this morning. At the time of recording for me, it's about noontime. I woke up a couple of hours ago. I had breakfast. I've stayed off social media. And so I just want to kind of give my initial thoughts, my reaction, my impressions of the upcoming characters for the next patch. Now that we are just a couple of days away from version 4.2, the conclusion of the Archon quest, the conclusion of the Renaissance and Elaine world quest with the world formula and the end of the world doomsday prophecy and everything else in between. I love how Anthony gave me the Narcissus and Kreutz Ordo backshot here because I really, really love this plot line. We just, just, just streamed the Caterpillar world quest with the unfinished comedy last night. So that is archived on my Twitch channel for any of you guys that are interested in the lore of Genshin, my thoughts, my theories and speculations with that process. Farina and Charlotte come out in a couple of days, but this is for Genshin 4.3. And I think we're now narrowing down the known characters of the patch thus far or rather of the region thus far I should say I think the only characters that we have left is Navia Clorind and Sedwin now that I've done the 4.1 content I actually don't know if Sedwin is going to be a four star or a five star character which means if those three are five stars I have no idea who the four star uh, rosters are going to be if we even have any more four stars between now and the remainder of the Fontaine line of, of patches moving forward I'm overall excited to kind of see what next characters we're going to get their moves sets just obviously for today we're going to be going through their lore a little bit about their backstory and things of that nature and so before we get into that i just want to say thank you guys all so much for the support of the upcoming videos that i've been posting the last couple of days and that also includes the time capsule playthrough i know that we're still behind on my playthrough being updated on this channel outside of things like drip marketing and like trailer reactions and live stream special programs but the discoverability of videos like these really goes a long way for people discovering my content especially for people even now that are still discovering me and are like i can't believe you've been playing Genshin for this long. I love the way that you focus on the lore of the game. And I've been doing this for the last three years now. So hopefully over time we can expedite things. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, supporting, commenting, watching me on Twitch, checking out the YouTube videos, even if you watch the streams and everything else like that. But anyways, let us see what version 4.3 has to offer us. We're going to be starting with the 4.3 drip marketing. Here we go. Oh, poisson oh shit okay all right we are switching gears now we have navia the mafia girl boss of the spina di rosula so here's the thing gamers i remember mentioning this prior to fontaine's release and even now i actually think navia might be the first character that i skip in genshin impact history i've never missed a banner i've never missed a four star or a five star in the three plus years that this game has been out but i think navia might be the first not because i don't like her but because I have claimed, yeah, I'm not going to be pulling for every character. And every patch this this region I have pulled and I've gotten every character. I was in the air with Risley and I got him in 20 pulls. So it's like, I can't complain that I got a five star in 20 pulls. Besides that, like everyone else has just kind of been like a guarantee. I'm pulling for Farina because Charlotte's on the banner. I'm going to try to snipe her going for the five star. And it's the fact that I can't lie. I don't really know how they're going to make her stand out as a Geo element character. Just because we haven't gotten a new Geo character, I think since Yunjin which has been like almost two years from now anyways we have navia she is a great character she's been kind of popping off and being playmaker of certain events throughout the 4.0 archon series let's check out a little bit about her lore here when we were young we used to play a kind of tabletop game where she would be the adventurer and i the host playing things by ear has always come naturally to me but all the same i was often stumped by her decisions and the repose she came out with but then again that's what made it so interesting clorin so i'm assuming clorin is going to be for version 4.5 four maybe they're winding down at this point i don't know if arlecchino is going to be a factor as well when you consider the fact that we're not getting a fatui weekly boss with this our conquest conclusion we're getting the giant primordial abyssal narwhal i don't really know when arlecchino is going to come into play if she is going to be playable we'll see so we have navia title helm of the radiant rose aka mafia girl boss of the spina di rosula president leader boss commander in chief of the spina di rosula with a geo vision constellation rosa multiflora very very intrigued to see her gameplay her combat i initially coming into this region i was already writing off navia just by the fact that she was geo and i really had to start picking my battles and choosing who i was going to pull for who was i going to skip and i think this might actually be it i think there's another character we're getting here that anthony put in the drip marketing so depending on who the other five star or four star character is i might consider if this is just going to be a full skip banner altogether or you know how things will play out moving forward but i still love her you know i i don't like 
like this mindset that people in the Genshin community have that if you skip a character or if you don't build a character or if you don't crown a character that somehow equates to you not valuing them or not liking them as much as the person who views that perspective which I find that to be kind of immature kind of elitist and you know just overall cringe to like perceive someone not spending potentially hundreds of dollars to get a character and equating that to oh you didn't spend hundreds of dollars to get the character and the weapon you must not like them I've seen that I've seen that perspective and like I don't want people to consider that for me because I've pulled every character in the game thus far. My pulling habits have never been solely based on the fact that I like this character. It's been a multitude of, do I like their lore? Do I like their gameplay? Do I want to have a varied experience or do I want to use the same characters for the last three years? You know what I mean? And I'm a content creator. So at the end of the day, it was also an investment long-term. For Navia, I really do appreciate how she's contributed to the story of Fontaine thus far, especially with courthouse situation and her conversation with Nuvillette. Navia was the one that kind of bridged that gap with me opening up to Nouvellet more during the early acts of the game and Nouvellet is one of my he's probably without a doubt in my top 10 favorite characters in the game now which is insane considering we've only been in Fontaine for two and a half for like three patches now outside of that maybe my, my mind will ch be changed once we see her gameplay but she's Claymore so she's already on the weapon archetype that I really love I love Claymore users I love the Claymore genre in general but the Geo element hasn't really shined all that much in the last couple of years and because it doesn't interact with Dendro and it's kind of like a standard alone it doesn't even do really reactions i'm wondering if they're going to maybe integrate her with crystallize in some way but with every other element all of the other elements are so diverse it's just like geo has really fallen off and i almost kind of want them to rework it at this point or maybe by the time we get to snezhnaya work on animo geo and cryo being a part of the full set of reactions for dendro i think that would be really cool to spice up those elements moving forward if hoyoverse has that in mind for you know reinvigorating the combat wheel down the road but we'll have to wait and see anyways i feel like i'm rambling a lot i do apologize but we're gonna get into the rest of her lore here navia helm of the radiant rose judging from her appearance there's no doubt that navia is the very picture of a fontanian lady truth be told she likes to accoutrate herself in ornate dresses and fine hats and carries with her a ribboned umbrella encrusted with jewels thus bedecked she flits around the streets of the court of fontaine the slopes of mont auto maqui as well as lesser known spots along the flu of sandra she's never before been hindered by her long flowing dress nor by her deceptively heavy umbrella which i think her umbrella is her claymore to some extent which is kind of cool fry is a sparrow she is the bearer of glad tidings from the spina di rosula to those in need perhaps this is why navia has become one of the famous reporter charlotte's favorite subject at the exhibit hall of the steambird there even hangs a photo connected to her called the soaring yellow rose but there's no need to worry for it goes without saying that the photo subject not only consents to its showing but also gave her enthusiastic support she is the lady of the people she kind of gives me the same energy that dia gives to sumeru or beto gives to Liyue. you know she's a girl boss she commands so many people she has the admiration and respect of the people and i think that shines and goes a long way with showing the varied levels of of support both from the upper echelon and the underbelly of fontaine as a whole i love her design i do agree with the statement that she is the perfect depiction like the accurate portrayal of a fontanian lady with all of the glitz and glamour she's got the you know the parasol she's got the long flowing hair she's got the nice fancy hat the beautiful dress she's gorgeous she's you know what i mean like i've seen so many comparisons of her to taylor swift whenever she's on screen my chat just spams taylor swift and i've seen a lot of the comparisons with taylor swift and like her freaking like silver and like her guards and stuff like that she's a lover of sweet she's a gem she is amazing she's beautiful she's fantastic and i just wonder how her gameplay is going to shake up you know because that's one of the main reasons why i look forward to getting new characters is because you know it's nice to switch out you know your 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 routine of combat you know what i mean to spice things up to kind of get that new dopamine hit of that new move or damage increasing as you're leveling up a brand new character and such so overall really happy that navia is the the character of choice and i'm interested to see who's next all right we move next character oh whoa who is this chevrus captain chevrus executor of justice hold up bro first off she looks like she's wearing pom-pom's outfit <laughs> 
Yo, they really are reusing Pom Pom's assets. First, it was Charlotte that kind of looks like she's dressed up as Pom Pom. And now it's this character. I actually think this character was quoting Charlotte. Now that I think about it, now that I'm like, oh, she looks like she's wearing Charlotte's outfit. I think this was the character that was referring to Charlotte during Charlotte's drip marketing, like for the quote that I did at the time. Yet another exasperated exchange between Captain Chevrousse of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol and Euphrasie, editor-in-chief of the Steambird. Interesting. So some of her colleagues are speaking on some of the uh, some of the integrity, the journalistic integrity of Charlotte, the fact that she's willing to risk her life for a good story. Interesting. So purple flowing hair. She looks like she's a part of the, yeah, she's a part of the uh, security and surveillance patrol team. Actually, she's the captain of the security and surveillance patrol team. Wow. So I assume that this is the four star character then with a pyro vision. Interesting. Okay. Depending on how this character plays, I might consider pulling for them too. I would much rather try to go for a four star than the five star. And if it builds me pity up to a certain point, I don't mind that. And if I get one of them, I won't mind it either, but I know what I'm getting into going into that. But yeah, this was not a character I was expecting. I don't think there's any more four stars that we know of within Fontaine at this point. I think Sedwin is a five star. Navi is a five star. Clorinda is a five star. And those are all of the remaining characters, except with the exception of Arlecchino. So I really don't know how they're going to play out these next couple of patches, unless these patches are just going to be five star exclusives. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyways, let's check this out. Captain Chevrous, once again, I implore you, you must tighten up the special security and surveillance patrols entry requirements. Right now, we count among our members petty crooks who have burgled all over the court of Fontaine, street fights whose only concern is getting rich, and even a bandit whose band of cronies almost succeeded in robbing a bank. If you hadn't personally caught him red-handed, scoping the place out under the guise of being an investor, they might very well have pulled it off. For pity's sake, we're supposed to be the Maison Gardenage. Even if just to preserve our image, please consider doing something. The ninth in a series of pleading letters sent to Chevreuse by Captain Gross Rochard of the Guards. Name Chevreuse, title Executor of Justice, Special Security and Surveillance Patrol Captain with a Pyro Vision. I don't know why, but when I look at her, I kind of get like Siren vibes from Honkai Impact 3rd, Pom Pom vibes from Honkai Star Rail, and like a little bit of Amber and Fischl. Maybe Fischl, not, not so much Fischl, but it's like the purple hair is like what's throwing me off. A very interesting design nonetheless. Purple and red are really good complementary colors, so shout out to the design of this character. All right, and let's check out the rest of the lore here. Behave yourself or the patrol will get you. A warning often issued to naughty Fontanian children from exasperated parents. Of course, those children are too young to understand how ridiculous such a thought is that you might be dragged off by the special security and surveillance patrol for going to bed too late, eating snacks after brushing your teeth, or getting bad grades. In reality, the only people that the patrol are really after are notorious criminals. As children grow up and come to learn this, these warnings quickly lose their effect. But some members of the special security and surveillance patrol can't help but resent this type of education when they notice children on the street quietly slipping away as they approach. As they see it, painting such a picture of the patrol couldn't be more inappropriate. That is true because that's going to make children fear the armed forces instead of like having a mutual like relationship with them to know that they're there to protect and serve. They're going to be almost kind of seen as like the bad guy for children. So I get that. If people are allowed to keep saying such things, then the patrol's infamous reputation will loom like a shadow over the children of Fontaine. And who knows how long it will stay there. What's wrong with that? This is the special security and surveillance patrol captain Chevreuse's response as she sat there dealing with official documents. I hope they'll always remember our infamous reputation and understand the meaning behind behind it. That way, perhaps there won't need to come a day when I have to drag them away for real. That is also valid. If you are terrified of the police, you will never do anything to attract the attention of the police. It is a form of like low key fear mongering. But at the same time, the only time you would ever want to be in an interaction with like law enforcement is if you are responding to like a, an incident that you need to call them and you need to like correspond and whatnot, or you're the criminal in question. Other than those two aspects, like I feel like for her, she's like, it's a lot more work for me to get them involved so i would much rather them fear me out of respect in the hopes that they never have to like come face to face with me if they're a criminal or if they've done any wrongdoing so i completely get that i have to see her gameplay to see if i'm actually going to be interested in pulling for her she's got a gun like as a straight up weapon so i'm very interested to see how she fights i don't know if she's gonna have a catalyst and that's gonna allow her to do be like a gunslinger of sorts or if she is going like i can't really picture it any other way like clorind hasn't been in the game yet but i expect clorind to be like a dual wielder where she has a gun and a sword because she's a champion duelist. But with this person being uh, an enforcer of the law, kind of giving Fatui gunslinger vibes, like the guy who, like the pyro version that uses a gun,
done. So I, I wonder, and that'd be kind of cool too, to just see how that works in combat with her elemental skill, her burst, potentially her normal attack. Very interested. I will see if she is a four star, I will try to go for her um, to try to get that early four star snipe. And I'm at zero pity, maybe like 30, 40 pulls in to try to see if I can get her would be nice. So we'll go with that. And there's one more thing here too. Whoa. Wait. Oh shit. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> oh, her call. Whoa, hold on. Her clothes just changed. What the hell? And I, I think her hair's gone too. Oh my God. They updated Farina. I can't believe it. I need to see that one more time. So her clothes went from Numa to Osia and she no longer has her long hair and they updated her lore. Holy shit. They just pulled a freaking Linny, Lynette and Flemine. They had that with them too. They had updates after their Fatui alignment got revealed. Holy shit. Okay, so this has to do with the four point like so for this to be updated that means farina is going to go through some type of change in the archon quest and i'm like terrified of that already because i don't know if she's going to die i don't know if she's going to lose her her god status like her her archon status and give it to new Villette, give him his authority back or what we still have the demo to look forward to and the collected miscellany to hear what Dainsleaf has to say about her holy shit she could feel joy sorrow and anything in between she could be as vain and conceited or as meek and vulnerable as she wished as far as i'm concerned her very imperfections are what make her perfect a Sinner's confession full of love and regret. I think that might be Egeria, honestly, because Egeria's first quote was about the original sin is the fairest, everyone sinks. The original sin is the fairest, everyone sinks. Make the most of the final feast, because for the sinners, the curtain call has come. The Primordial Sea seems to be something that I don't know if Egeria caused or Egeria was tasked with dealing with when she founded the Fortress of Meropede and like kind of held the, the dukes of all of the Meropedes over the generations to look after and to keep the Primordial Sea contained. So if she is considered the original sinner of this entire prophecy and what has led to it kind of coming to fruition, I don't know. It's very interesting. A sinner's confession full of love and regret. So someone that loves Farina and someone regrets the situation that farina is in is referring to her as such and it says she could feel joy sorrow and everything in between why doesn't it say she can almost implying that, that that's almost kind of like a past tense like she could have done all these things and she was imperfect but that's what made her perfect you know what i mean that's almost kind of like a human condition kind of thing so i don't know that's kind of giving dis descendants vibes like instead of her ascending to archonhood she might give that up and lesser herself to like something normal and simple name farina title endless solo of solitude regina of all waters kindred people and laws question mark question mark question mark hydro looks like she has a hydro vision on her now let's see what it was before before it was her it was like her gemstone so i i actually holy fuck what if she gives up her gnosis and authority to Nuvillette. And by doing that, because she feels that he might be a better suited candidate for managing Fontaine, what if that then gains her favor from the gods and so she ends up getting a vision? I actually think she might get demoted from Archon to just human or just whatever she is, like just a normal person. And she gets a vision instead, which would under, which would explain why she loses the long hair because all of the Archons have like the tips of their hair. Like they start glowing and that's kind of like a continuous like effect that that all the archons or i guess people that have channeled gnosis power have right nuvillet has it too but he's kind of like the first generation archon before they were known as archons right he's the sovereign and the power of the archons is essentially the sovereign's power reverse engineered through the gnosis because of celestia so anyone that harnesses the power of the sovereign dragon has that effect where their hair glows at the end so if her hair is getting cut i feel like that's because she is no longer going to be an archon by the end of this patch and that's why it's saying what her element is the same thing was kind of similar for Nuvillette, where Nuvillette's was very different in terms of you know he didn't have the gnosis but we didn't know about his sovereign authority either so for this one i actually think it might go back down to vision but they wouldn't say that in this because that would kind of spoil she no longer has her gnosis but she goes she's, she's essentially been canonically downgraded i think that's what it's implying here and then we have a little bit more lore i can't believe this though and that's another thing too in her teaser it showed like a flip between her ocean and numa design which i think that actually might be a split from 
her god status versus her mortal status her reverence as a deity versus her new beginnings as like an insignificant everyday common person you know what i mean so i actually think that that might be a bit more of the duality the duality between divine and ordinary personally as the voices of doubt have bubbled up like a torrent she has been forced to adopt a higher spirited and more unyielding demeanor in her defense she's been playing a role she's been playing her part this entire time she's she's almost kind of like princessin and amy where princessin is the higher elevated defense mechanism character persona that protects the young youthful and naive and innocent amy on the inside but she must also continue to fulfill her duties at hand and cannot possibly let her weakness be exposed through the rise and fall of her emotions the advent of an impending disaster long foretold by ancient prophecies draws near faced with such times what is a god to do more than anyone else she wishes she knew from an onlooker's perspective she seems distracted and wary but she waves this off as simple as a simple lack of sleep as the regina loved and respected by her people how could she let such buzzing naysayers get to her no no matter how chaotic and urgent things get she can't allow herself to drop the ball now nor can she let those years of hard work come to nothing beloved by all the one and only star of this grand opera whether lonely helpless in pain or in sorrow and even if it means taking all the misery in the world onto her shoulders her will to protect the people of fontaine every last one of them has never yet faltered she will do anything and everything even give up her status of a god to protect her people and we've never really seen that in this light right zhang li faked his death right Raiden a still governs her people as the as a as the archon of her nation despite not having the gnosis nahida is very much the same she is kind of learning and going through the process but she has still commanded herself as the archon of sumeru i don't know how the people would feel if farina gave up that divine status if it meant her people could be saved if giving that up to nuvelet for him to attain full godhood or rather full dragonhood to then somehow use his full powers to command the water primordial or otherwise to save the people and that would create a lesser version of Farina. so i think fossilors is the archon perceived version of her and Farina is the commoner like the everyday normal person with woes and worries and and fears and insecurities and it kind of mirrors that of the princess and, and amy i never thought that this could possibly be a possibility that's actually crazy to me god i just hope nothing happens to her i know she's got a story quest i know some people are like there's no way they're gonna kill an archon they get a story quest i will never like let my logic rob me of theory theorizing the possibility of that happening because it could happen you know what i mean they could subvert expectations to that degree and i also don't even know about is fontaine already underwater is all of this a joke, a lie, a sick, you know, crazy, twisted perception of reality that we're experiencing through the things that have been kind of prophesized that to happen? And I don't know how Farina expects to deceive fate if fate is foretold. It can't be changed. But, you know, with Nicole coming out of the woodwork and Mona potentially getting into the picture, the divine might be tested. It might be challenged. It might be overthrown, right? Fate might actually be able to be rewritten and, and we're gonna, we'll hopefully potentially witness that firsthand. Something's got to give something's got to happen i love farina i plan on crowning her i will be pulling for her probably off stream before we do the archon quest i actually might i was considering doing the archon quest on wednesday i actually might do it on thursday to give my viewers a potential one day head start to while i stay off social media to give them a one day head start so when i start the archon quest we can have a huge reception of people that are all kind of excited to hear and see my thoughts on it but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it this is a very long video i apologize but i feel like there was a lot to say here um i love farina i think she's incredible she's basically an archon front and center perspective and like reflection official who's one of my favorite characters in genshin and she's great i love her brattiness i love her bravado i love her spirit i love her energy i love that she is cocky and arrogant but also the complete antithesis of that with being uncertain and very self-centered with her emotions and i just i i believe in her 110 percent i don't care what the naysayers say i don't care what people say that they're annoyed or they find her annoying or just not up with what an archon is she is not like any of the archons and i love that i love that she is different i love that she is a breath of fresh air and i just really 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 hope that they knock this archon quest out of the water because 
I am. I've never been. I don't remember the last time I've been this hyped to see the conclusion of a of a of a, of a storyline for the Archon Quest. Probably since the Sumeru finale as well. But um, but yeah, I'm still in the dark with everything. I can't wait to see what happens. But let me know what you guys think about the drip marketing, my thoughts, theories, speculations, everything else in between. Are any of you guys pulling for Navi? Are any of you guys pulling for Chevrus? What are your thoughts about re drip marketing approach to Farina? I think that's really cool too. And uh, yeah, Archon Quest is in a couple of days. I'm very excited. To check it out. I hope you guys will check me out over on twitch.tv slash murder of birds. And uh, until my next video, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.